started changing the VM and adding the libraries according to JSR1. Uh, these, these customers wanted heavy iron, so a Solaris and Spark underneath. And in a couple months, we'll be code complete. We have an early release program available. Uh, people that want to experiment with it, bring it into their lab. We can do some paperwork and get a CD out to you. We've done that a number of times. People are working with it. And we're getting good results. Yeah. So, yeah, so, it's, so, so, so for the stuff that's, that's, that's done right now, it's been really very solid. Absolutely. Um, and they're, they're, they're just sort of, sort of, right now, it's kind of fleshing out the corner cases. Right, right. So, so let's see this thing run. Yeah, so over here we have actually, uh, we call this Mackinac, and we're doing uh, a classic control problem called an inverted pendulum. Right, so, so an inverted pendulum is, you know, remember back in school when you were trying to sort of goof off in math class, you know, standing, you know, sitting there with your hand and trying to balance a ruler on your hand? That's, a, that's an inverted pendulum. So we have a, a cart that runs back and forth on a rail here and a pendulum that is now hanging down. The idea is that we will use the RTSJ, code written in Java, running on the RTSJ, Solaris and Spark, to read the position of the cart linearly and the angle of the pendulum. Then we use, we take those inputs, give them to a control law. The control law tells us a new cart position based on what the pendulum's doing and what we want it to do. We do that every five milliseconds. We have to do that without fail or the pendulum's not going to work right. So there's two modes. There's the swing up and the balance mode. So I'm just going to hit the start button and we'll see this thing swing up. So you can see it's sort of swishing the, the pendulum around until it tries to get enough angular momentum to get it to the top and it's just balanced it. Now, now, now there's, 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 there, there's, there's no actual cheating here because there's there is only one motor and there's only two sensors here. Right. There's just the angle and just the, the position. Right, so you, can, you know, so you can fuss with this little brain and you can try to tip the stick over and it, this was down in the pavilion and I think this was one of the favorite things for people to walk up to is sort of, you know, try to, you know, and, and you know, imagine holding a, holding a ruler and having, you know, your friend across the, the aisle sort of try to tip the ruler and keep it up. You know, this is actually pretty good. Of course, if you tap it a little bit too hard, um, it, it hits the limit off the end and it falls over and, and it has to sit and think and start swishing again, get a little angular momentum going, and pretty soon it's locked. <laughs> so, so this isn't, I mean, the, this isn't actually the really cool part. No, there's actually more cool stuff. Yeah. So, one thing I want to show you is that, of course, in the RTSJ, we know that there are threads that you can write that aren't affected by GC. And so just uh, as a visual understanding of that, all of these, this GUI, the applet, the graphing, they're all running on the same VM. So we do non-real-time and hard real-time on the same VM. Right, and that, and that applet is, is doing some you know, weird, weird, weird image scaling just to sort of gratuitously uh, consume CPU cycles. Right. There's the occasional GC going, and you notice that no matter how much computing or GCing is going on, it never actually drops the pendulum. So we can actually create a lot of garbage so much that the the applet slows right down, so the garbage collector now is running full out. Yeah, so, so what he just did was he fired off a little loop that sits there just saying new array, bang, 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 as fast right. as he can. Right. So he is allocating memory, he is, he is forcing the garbage collector to go, and now he just, he just killed that thread and you saw the, the animation applet sort of get some CPU cycles back. Right. But no matter what, this guy kept going. Um, the the, 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 the real-time threads that manage this were running while the garbage collector was running. So the next step is these customers, of course, for these big systems need uh, fault tolerance. You can't control a 200-ton turbine and, and wait and 
for the machine to reboot if you have a problem. So you need fault detection and failover, hot backups. Right, so, so you can see there's not just one processor here, there's, there's, a, there's a second server. So the only connection between the two servers is this one little thin wire here between the two uh, data acquisition cards. Right, and, and, the, and the wire basically says, I'm alive, are you? I'm alive, right. And, and it says I'm alive when the server's on, the card is powered up, and the application is writing a heartbeat to the driver. So even if the application fails, this line goes low and the, the secondary takes over. Now this is all written in Java. So yeah. this is application level, fault detection, and failover. Right. Of course, except for the wire. We haven't figured out how to do that in Java yet. So I'm just uh, going to make sure that the backup is, is ready to take over. And so the backup is following, reading the encoders, computing, but it's not writing. And so kill that VM. The left one takes over. Yeah, everything. so if you notice, that unfortunately the fonts are kind of small, but over here on the left, that one went from backup to active. Now let's, let's relaunch that guy. Okay. So we'll start this one in backup mode. And I want you to fail that one. All right. OK, go ahead. Now, that failed. This and one's just passed over. over, back, back over right. again. So f now, for the, the grand finale. So let's, uh, let's, let's reboot this one here. Yeah. Do the soft reboot of the app and get it actually started. OK. So we're ready for failover. So, so now you, time. if you look at the, at the readers, the, the, that one on the right is, is active. The one on the left is the backup. <laughs> so we should have a count. All right, everybody. Five, four, three, two, one. Was that boring or what? Thanks, James. So the, I mean, so the really, you know, one of the important things about, about real time is you want it to be very boring, right? I mean, the last thing you want, you know, is a, is a, is a, is a hundred ton turbine becoming exciting. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, you know, one of the things 